Hello, I'm Eleni of Stathiu. I'm a physician at the MD Anderson Cancer Center, a medical oncologist who focuses on treating my prostate cancer. I'm really excited to be here in San Francisco where we just had the GU ASCO of 2019. The weather sucked, it was really bad, so you didn't miss much, but you missed a lot of great data. And a lot of the data revolved around this newfound interest in prostate cancer, totally putting prostate cancer in focus in the non-metastatic castrate-resistant prostate cancer. Now, I know all about what you do in Brazil. You have access to all the PSMA pets and the like. You're very privileged and fortunate, but we don't have that in the rest of the world. We're not like you. So essentially, all of these trials that have been presented since last year, focusing on what we call non-metastatic or M0 castrate-resistant prostate cancer, have one common feature. They didn't use PET scans. They didn't use whole body MRIs. It was all about old school, bone scan and CAT scan. Please keep that in mind when you actually think about defining prostate cancer that is called now metastatic. It means that the bone scan and the old school CAT scan is negative and the PSA is going up. So here's what's happened within just one year. We got three trials, three, not one, not two, but three trials showing super positive results. And this is the interesting part, and this is what makes biostatisticians be really happy. When you get three trials with very similar types of drugs, show very positive and very similar results. It's almost like you copied and you pasted. it. That's how it worked out. So essentially, the first two trials that were reported in this room, in this place where we are last year on the 7th of uh, February, were Spartan, and PROSPER. Spartan is a trial that used a new, was considered new agent a year ago, apalutamide, which is a second generation anti-androgen that targets exactly in a similar fashion the androgen signaling X is likely low with enzalutamide. It also has the potential to cross the brain barrier. So we saw the data of last year comparing use of apalutamide in this setting, the non-metastatic, versus use of placebo while the patient remains on LHRH analog. The data was very impressive to favor increased time to metastases, metastases-free survival for the use of apalutamide. Since that time though, a lot of the secondary endpoints have evolved. It's a little bit too early to say that survival is there yet, but it's coming. And we know that metastasis-free survival correlates and may be also used as a surrogate to overall survival. But interestingly, since that time we saw that the drug is safe, there are some minor side effects. It does concur with a higher level of quality of life and does not create any deficit to the patient who's on it. And also we saw a very, very important point that was updated yesterday. PFS2. So it turns out that earlier is better and PFS2 showed that. What is PFS2? MFS, metastasis-free survival, shows the progression from the time of randomization till you show up with the first metastasis. PFS2 shows from randomization till the time you get the second progression, which can be imaging symptomatic and the like. So interestingly enough, all patients on placebo were either crossed over to apalidamide or given abiraterone when they progressed. Well, if it didn't matter when you treated the patient, then over time we should have seen yesterday that the two curves would have come together in PFS2. Well, guess what? There's still a big hazard ratio, 0.5, to favor using apalidamide up front. So this is phenomenal. This is the first time we've seen this prospective validation of treating earlier being better. That's one trial you're gonna say. Well, PROSPER using enzalutamide instead of apalutamide showed the same data with regard to MFS, to secondary endpoints, to quality of life. Yesterday, the paper was published. Well enough, and you're gonna say, well, I need more. Yesterday, we got the Aramis data. The Aramis data comes out of like a drug we've never used, dirolutamide. It's a little bit different than apalutamide, denzalutamide, but still an anti-androgen of the second generation. The claim is that it doesn't go through the brain, so may have a little bit of a better profile. Same study. What I can clearly comment on is the data with regard to the primary endpoint 
confirming the previous two studies. I haven't used the drug yet. I'm expecting to use it because we always take, you know, safety with a grain of salt. Until you start treating your own patients and see how it works, you can't be sure. The, the only difference between the three trials, if you look carefully, is that Spartan trial had the patients come every month in, so it's very, very detailed on side effects. Prosper was every four months, and the same with Aramis every four months. So monitoring becomes really important in real life because our patients are usually not superheroes like the ones who go on trial. I think we're gonna learn more in the coming year and this year, and I'm very excited to share this update with you from San Francisco. Thank you very much.